Okay, so integration, we've talked about what this means before with Riemann sums. It has to do with Riemann sums. Next week, I'm going to connect what Riemann sums has to do with what we're doing today. I'm, for today, I'm not really going to talk about Riemann, sum, Riemann sums at all anymore. I'm going to really focus on this word right here, antiderivatives. Okay, what does anti mean? Against, kind of opposite, basically an opposition to, it is the opposite of taking the derivative. Okay, so we saw this at the end of that one worksheet. So let's try this again. Find a function, and we see capital F here, where lowercase f, it's whose derivative is lowercase f 3x squared. Basically, if I take the derivative of capital F, I get lowercase f. I could have used f and g here. <coughs> you can use anything. But the whole gist is... There is a function, and its derivative is 3x squared. What is that function? Whose derivative is 3x squared? So I'm starting off with one that we can kind of guess and check backwards from. And if you're like, I don't know how you came up with that, I am going to give you a very black and white rule within about five minutes, okay? But... Um, so here's, here's how we can check it, okay? If our function is x cubed, what is the derivative of x cubed? 3x squared, so we did good, or I did good, I guess. Okay, and if you came up with it, you did good too. Okay, like I said, I'm gonna help you guys to figure out how you do this, because I did hear some like sixes in there and some twos in there, and there's, you're on the right track, and we're gonna get there, and like I said, I'm going to give you a black and white rule, but we need to talk about some vocabulary first. Okay, so we have these phrases, antiderivative and indefinite integral, or we could just say integral here, that would be okay. The whole indefinite part, I'm going to talk more about why that adjective is right there later. For today, you just need to think of these two things as the same, okay? Um, this next part you know, we have this plus C. So why do we have plus C? All right, and so we kind of talked about this on the worksheet, but let me make sure I get it in this video. Plus C represents any number, okay? It could be plus 2, it could be minus 8, because what happens when you take the derivative of this number? It goes away. So 3x squared, uh, or sorry, x cubed plus anything, minus anything, that's a number, I'm going to get, if I take derivative, 3x squared, okay? That's what plus c is. We need to put this on every answer when we do these antiderivatives. It's going to become habit, and so hopefully it will not be something you forget. Um, and we call this the antiderivative. If we have a family of these functions with the plus c, we call these general antiderivatives. Now, tomorrow we are going to be able to figure out, we're going to be able to solve for plus c on certain problems, and those are going to be called particular antiderivatives or particular solutions. Okay, so we have a lot of vocabulary here. The phrasing, though, kind of tells you what it is. It's not like I'm going to test you over this vocabulary. I just want you to be comfortable with it. This next word or phrase, differential equation, the two words that tell you exactly what it means. It's an equation that involves derivatives. Okay. Now remember when I give you a theorem, if it has a special name, we're going to have we're going to use that theorem at some point. We're going to need to quote it whatever. All right, but theorem 4.1 has no special name. So then we have this theorem. I'm going to talk about it and hopefully it'll make sense. So if we have an antiderivative of f, okay? And we have something else that's also an antiderivative, the only difference there can be between the two is the number that's being added on them. Okay, so here's the good news. When we take antiderivatives, there's going to be one answer, and it's going to be that answer plus C. All right, it's not like we're just going to come up with all sorts of different answers. All right, let's look at this next part, and we're going to get into our example. Here we have a differentiable uh, or differential equation. Okay, it's differential because what does dy over dx mean? The derivative of y, so y prime. Okay, and it's the equation because of the equal sign. 
So I want you to think about algebraically how do we go from dy over dx equals f of x to dy equals f of x dx. We multiplied by dx. And I'm just kind of making a note of this, and this is a conversation we're going to pick up more tomorrow. Look at this down here. Now, you don't really have a word. I mean, we do, but it's new. How do we go from derivative of y to just y? We anti-derive. We take the anti-derivative. Okay? In this symbol, do you guys remember what this little symbol is called? Starts with an I. An integral. Okay? An integration symbol. We talked about it a little bit with Riemann sums. It means to anti-derive. This whole lowercase versus uppercase um, letter, don't let that throw you. It's going to be fine. Um, it's kind of convention, like how we use F and F prime, like when you go backwards to use capital letters. In the end, we're not going to be writing any of these letters. We're going to be doing specific examples. Okay, so on to like where we're actually going to use this. Okay, old stuff. Go ahead and derive this on your own. So everybody on your own, just using stuff from last semester, derive that polynomial and write it in the blank. Peek over at a neighbor's paper, see if you got the same thing they got. No, because this is, or this one thing is old stuff. Okay, that's totally fine. Yeah, thank you. Okay, um, Abraham, what'd you get? Okay, who agrees? Yeah, good job. Okay, so then just a quick review of what power rule was. This was when we took derivatives a long time ago. We multiplied the coefficient by the old power, so we kind of did like 5 times 2 to get 10, and then we subtracted 1 from the power. All right, now coming straight down to here, I've pretty much given you exactly the, oh, I, not pretty much, I've given you the exact same thing. So if we're integrating or anti-deriving, we already know what the answer should be. It should be this. Now the plus one is a little iffy, all right, because I can't tell that the plus one should be there just by looking at this 10x to the fourth polynomial. So what I'm going to write instead, um, let's go ahead and write this down. I'm trying to do too many things at once. Oh, sorry. Thank you. That should be a plus up there. Thank you. So instead of a plus 1 at the end, okay, I am going to go ahead and put a plus C. We only know that it was plus 1 because I'm kind, we're kind of doing the same problem backwards and forwards. Um, without that first um, part A, I wouldn't have even known that that was plus 1. So that's why we put plus C. It's plus some constant. Okay, so what I would like for you to do is to kind of look... How do we go from this 10x to the 4th polynomial to the 2x to the 5th polynomial? And I want you to try to do this on your own first. I've kind of given a sentence that you can put words in the blanks. If you would prefer to write it out in your own words, please do that. If you want to work with someone else, do that too. But let's come up with a rule of how to do this. Totally lost. Cheat on a neighbor's paper. Peek over at somebody else is writing something out. Mm -hmm. So, do you see how when I derive 2x to the 5th and I got 2x to the 4th? Now I'm giving you 2x to the 4th. And we anti derive, we get 2x to the 5th. It's just the same. We're just doing the problem forwards and backwards. So, start with what happens to the power. <laughs> We know when we derive, we subtract one from the power. What's happening when we go backwards? 
So that's a good place to start. So I want you to try to develop this as much as you can on your own first. If you're like, I don't like that sentence, I'm going to write, write it out separately. You've got to write down whatever you need on your own paper. And I get that I haven't told you how to do this yet. You're, you're kind of figuring this out on your own. Okay, so if you're just like, I don't even know what we're, what you're even asking me to do, let alone how to do it. Let me re, let me say this again. I am asking you how you go from this polynomial to this polynomial. What were the changes that were made? Okay, so first of all, anybody, what happened to the power? We added one to the power. Remember when we derived, we always subtracted one from the power? Now we are adding one to the power because we're going backwards. We're doing the opposite. Makes sense. Okay? And so I added one to the power. Well, before, I had to multiply the coefficient and the power to get the new coefficient. Okay, what are we doing this time? We're dividing. We're dividing the coefficient, which in this case would be 10. Are we dividing it by the old power 4 or the new power 5? by the new. All right, now, everybody kind of gets this in waves, so I know there's still some people who are like, I get it, but I'm kind of iffy. What I'm going to do is I am going to go through this problem one time as if I didn't even know what the answer was, okay? So if we were trying to integrate this 10x to the fourth, this is how a very black and white rule would be. I would write the 10, and I would say divided by something I don't know what yet. And then I would write the x, okay? Add 1 to the power of x. That makes a 5. Whatever you write there, you write here. Okay, so let's try this again. Minus 3 times, or sorry, minus 3 over. Okay, so 3 over something. We write the x. The power was 2 for squared. What's the power now? 3, and so that's what you write down here. And then you keep going. Plus 4 over something. We'll find out in a minute. Now for 4x, there's no power listed, but we know that that's a 1. So what's the new power? 2. Because we're adding 1. We're going backwards. Remember, we're anti-deriving. So the new power is 2, so I put a 2 down here. Okay, minus 7 over. All right, now what was the power on that 7? Well, there's no x at all. So what was the power? Zero. So we add one, and then that number also goes here. And obviously, you need a plus c. So if I clean this up just a little bit, I could do 10 divided by 5 and get 2, 2x two to the fifth. 3 divided by 3 is 1. We don't have to write that. We can just write minus 3x squared. 4 divided by 2 is 2. So 2x squared minus 7x plus c. That's how you anti-derive. That's how you integrate. Okay? As we go through this, some of you are going to stick to this rule, do or die. Some of you are going to develop little shortcuts in your mind. That's fine. Okay? So let's look at number three. Um, I want to start the first part, and then I'm going to have you finish this. So integrating anti-derive same thing that's what that symbol means it means take the anti-derivative write that down if you think you need it i don't know what that means no okay so i would write the three and i'm going to divide it by something i have an x I add 1 to the power. It was 4, so now it becomes 5, and 5 goes underneath the 3 like that. So I want you to try to finish this problem on your own. And then I want you to get your calculator out.
Um, no, but I'm going to show you a way you can check your work. There's an indirect. Yes. Is that anti derive? No, that's just derive. But. Okay, can anybody tell me what the second term should be? Five thirds x cubed. Of course, when you're writing it, you probably did five over and left that blank, and then you came up with the new power, then you wrote that number down. It's really whatever works for you. What about the next one? Yeah, one over something. The power was one, now it's a two. Put a two down there, and then don't forget at the very end, Plus C. I have a funny story to tell you about my own experience as a calculus student with plus C. I'll tell you at the end of class. You don't forget the plus C. It's important. Okay, let's talk about how to do this in the calculator. Okay, so the first thing is be in the home screen. Make sure you don't have anything stored in for X. Okay, so clear your variables. Second F1 if you need to. All right, then we're going to go to F3. Remember, option one was differentiate. Option two was integrate. Okay, I showed you this just a couple of times, so we don't have it down yet, but we're getting there. So option two, integrate. And then we're going to list out what was this problem that we were doing, okay? So let's just type it in. You go to F3, and option one was differentiate, option two is integrate. That's what we're doing. We're integrating. Okay, what do we typically put at the end of these things? Comma X. So we got to go comma X. Um, now, last week, or whenever it was that I showed you all this, we put some numbers at the end. Okay, there's no numbers, there's no interval here, there's not even a context to this problem. So we're going to end the parentheses after the comma X. And I would encourage you to write these steps down in your notes or in your TI-89 flipbook so that you will remember how to do them. Because this is a good way to check your work. Okay, once you press enter, two things are going to happen. You're going to see the problem and it looks a lot more like how it does on the paper. The second thing is, we have our answer here, and there, your calculator will not do a plus C. You have to know to do the plus C. Yeah. I wish it was programmed in to do it, but it's not. Okay, so this is something you need to be able to do without a calculator, but if you need a calculator to check it, there you go. How else, without a calculator, could you check this answer? Just take the derivative. 5 times 3 fifths, what is that? Don't hurt your brain on this, it's 3. Okay, 3x, three we would subtract 1. 3 times 5 thirds, that's just 5. Subtract 1 from the power. 2 times a half, that's a 1. Subtract 1 from the power, so I'm not going to write that 1, and then derivative of c would be nothing. So this is how you can check your work without a calculator. For some people, the hardest part is going back and forth between deriving and anti-deriving. You've, you've, the only way you're going to get better at that is practice, okay? That's, that's all I got for that. Okay, turn the page. Let's go over some integration rules. And some of these are like actual rules, and some of these are more just like things that help us help integration be a little bit easier. Okay, so first thing. What do you think happens when you integrate and derive? They cancel each other, they cancel each other out. They're, they're opposite things, right? So I'm just going to write capital F only because that's a capital F. So it's like these two things are canceling each other out. 
And because integration was the outer function, I do need to put a plus C there. Okay, what do you think happens when we derive an integral? Don't hurt yourself. They cancel each other out. They're anti-derived integral and anti-derivative. Same thing. So they cancel each other out. Now, I don't need a plus C here. Why not? The outer function is deriving. So if there was a plus C, what would happen when I take derivative? It would go away. Okay, anybody want to take a shot in the dark what the antiderivative of zero is? That's not a bad guess. Zero is correct. You have nothing, you take the antiderivative, you still have nothing, but we have a plus C. So really you could say that it is C. Okay, you don't have to put zero plus C, you could just put C if you wanted there. C is a number. So let me go back to this problem, because I can really only explain this in this situation in the context of a problem. This C is plus some constant. That's what C stands for. It's plus some number. If this said plus 17, would the derivative still be this down here? Yeah. What if it was plus 175? Yeah. It would be the same thing. In fact, I don't know what C is. We ever know what C is. Yes, tomorrow we're going to talk about how to find C. But we can only do it if I give you a little bit of clues as to how to find it. Like, with what we have here, you're just going to write plus C at the end, and that's it. You're not going to be able to find C. I haven't given you any information to help you find C, but that's we're going to do that tomorrow's lesson. Okay? So that's why we write plus C when we integrate, because we're going backwards from deriving. Um, okay, this K, okay, lowercase k is like a number. So, what if this will say a 5? What is the antiderivative of 5? In other words, whose derivative is just 5? Five? 5x. Whose derivative is just 11? So, whose derivative is k? kx and then plus c. Because again, 5x plus 2, 5x minus 9, those would all have the same derivative of 5. That's all the plus C means. Okay, this next rule really isn't so much like how to solve the integral. It just means if you have a number on the inside that you're multiplying, we saw this with limits and derivatives, you can just move that thing right to the outside. Okay? And I'm going to not even rewrite it. I'm just going to leave it just like that. This was true for limits. It's true for a lot of things. But it's true for derivatives and integrals. Okay, the next thing looks kind of weird, but this is really just asking what was our rule. And I'm going to do this in a different color, and I'm going to box it because out of everything up here, this is probably the most important thing. Okay, if I have an x to a power and I take the antiderivative, what happens to that power? And one. That's what happens when I derive. What happens when I integrate? We would add 1 to the power... And then I would do, I would have plus C for sure, but I have 1 over N plus 1. The coefficient was a 1. Remember, just like on the front, we wrote the new power, and then we put that in the denominator. It's the same thing we did on the front. You can even write that if you want. It's, that's just writing down the rule for how to integrate when you have exponents. Okay? Just remember, this is the first day we're doing something. Are you going to be an expert on anything you do for the first time? No. So just, it's okay. All right. So let's look at this next one. If we integrate f and we have plus or minus g, we actually already did this. Didn't we just integrate each piece individually? We did. So I want you to write integral or antiderivative of just f of x dx.
and then the integral of g of x dx. This does not work with multiplying and dividing, only adding and subtracting. Again, this is what we did on the front. We just did each piece of the polynomial individually. The dx, I kind of already, we kind of went through why there's a dx on the front, but here's, for now, the best way you can think of dx is it's just telling you that that thing next to it is a derivative. If that's how, if that's how you process dx, that's good for today and for the next week. Okay, as we go through this stuff, you're going to understand more why there's a dx there. All right, now, this next part is really where most people got upset with me because how dare I re require that you remember your six trig derivatives, okay? So, I, all of these are, this is not new. These are all the derivatives. Now, there's no minuses here, so we're going to have to account for that, and that's okay. But these are all derivatives. Like, whose derivative is cosine x? Sine x. Now I'm hearing some negatives and some positives, so I'm going to show you an easy way to check it. Okay? What is the derivative of sine x? Cosine. Just cosine. So we did it right. If I got negative cosine, well then I'm missing a negative somewhere. Okay, off to the side here, let's, let's um, refresh ourselves in the snow cone, snow cone. It's a hot day. I see you there, I take pity, and I go, I'm going to give you a snow cone. And then I say, never mind, I'm going to take it back because I'm a mean person, and I'm going to eat the snow cone. Yeah. So, when you are deriving, you are going to treat this going down. So, derivative of sine is cosine. Derivative of cosine is negative sine. Derivative of negative sine is negative cosine. What do you think you're going to do when you're integrating or anti-deriving? You're going to go up. So we can kind of see that it worked here. Derivative of cosine is sine. So, or antiderivative of cosine is sine. So what's the antiderivative or integral of sine? If we go up, we have to go all the way to the bottom. So that's one way you can know that there should be a negative there. Another way is the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So if I want to get positive sine, I've got to put a negative in there. Okay, that's another way of thinking about it. Okay, whose derivative is secant squared? Tangent. So tan x plus c. Whose derivative is secant x tan x? Secant x. And notice I'm just putting the plus c at the end. <laughs> now... Nobody's derivative is cosecant squared, but there is one whose derivative is negative cosecant squared. Which one is that? Cotangent. So I'm going to put a negative here to account for the fact that there isn't one here. In other words, if the derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared, and if I put an extra negative on my, there, my result would be positive. So what do you think goes in this last blank? Which one have we not done? Cosecant, so negative cosecant for the same reason x plus c. You need a negative for the same reason as the others. Okay, I'm not saying this is six more things you have to memorize. It's not. If you know your six trig derivatives really well, then you don't need to memorize this. You just need to be able to recognize it. Okay, so let's go through some examples. Let's look at number four. Um, just like when we did derivatives, okay, you are going to have to rewrite these things. So how could we rewrite x to the fourth? Or, yeah, x to the negative four, right? dx. So I rewrote it. Now I'm ready to actually integrate it. The coefficient right now is a one. So I'm going to do one over. And then I'm going to put the x. And then I'm going to think, what happens when I add 1 to negative 4? Negative 3. And then that exact number goes down here. Plus c. That's the answer. How could you check this? Take the derivative or use your calculator. <coughs> okay? 
Is it as bad as some of the people from my earlier classes were telling you? It's okay to say yes. That's what they said was hard. Well, I guess some people did say it was the hardest thing they ever learned. That's what I heard when everybody walked in. Well, we haven't done this yet. What? Okay, let's look at B. All right, we got to rewrite B. What's a good first step? X plus 1 over what? X to the 1 third. This is still not in polynomial form. And I do not have a quotient rule for integrals. We don't. So we got to continue to rewrite it. And we did this with derivatives, but it's been a while. So watch very carefully. And I would suggest you watch it and then you write it down. I, because my denominator is just one thing, I can divide the x by it, and then plus, and then divide the 1 by it, and then I wouldn't even have a fraction, which would be ideal. So how do you divide x to the 1 by x to the 1 third? It would be x to the what? Oh, it's x to the 3. How are you getting 2 thirds? Yeah, you subtract the exponents. I don't want to be like this, but that's Algebra 1. I know you. we haven't used it in a while, but it's in your brain. You've learned it several times. You can do this. Okay, plus. Okay, 1 divided by x to the 1 third is actually easier. We just did that over here in example A. It would just be x to the negative 1 third. I'm going to squeeze in a little tiny dx at the end. Okay, this, what I'm doing right now, is algebra. Okay, I'm not saying it's easy, but that's the part where people probably think this stuff is hard. It's not the calculus. We only have one rule, really, that I'm teaching you. Um, but the algebra of rewriting it, again, the only way you're going to get better at this is by practicing. Okay, any questions about why I rewrote it this way? Okay, so... What's the coefficient on the first piece? 1. So 1 divided by something. Okay, x. Now, I have a power of 2 thirds. I need to add 1 to that power. 5 thirds. So now we're going all the way back to 4th grade. So I put a little 5 thirds right here. All right, second term, 1 divided by, write the x. The power is negative 1 third. I need to add 1 to the power, so that would be 2 thirds. And so that's the number I write down here. And then don't forget your plus c at the end. You don't have to simplify. This would be totally OK for a final answer. However, in a multiple choice, it would never be written like this. So what is 1 divided by 5 thirds? 3 fifths. You do not have to simplify it this way. Um, just 3 fifths. Just reciprocal. Yeah. Oh, it's just part of the equal sign. Yeah. And then the 1 over 2 thirds would be 3 halves. Okay. I'm not saying you have to do that. I don't even really care if you do it. I just want you to be able to do it. Okay, we're going to skip C for the moment. We'll do that one tomorrow as like a warm-up. And we're going to go straight into D, which has a little bit of trig in it. And again, I do not have a quotient rule. Okay, and does this right here look like any of the six up here? Not exactly. It doesn't look like any, I mean, like, what I'm asking is, is it cosine, is it sine, is it C? It's not any of those. We need to make it look like those. You want to know why you did a whole chapter on trig proofs? It's to be able to do stuff like this, although this is probably one of the easiest trig proofs you did. I'm not asking you to do a trig proof. I'm just asking you to use the basic identities to rewrite this. So I'm going to kind of give you a hint, and I'm going to rewrite the cosine squared as a cosine x times cosine x. 
We're going to see if we can get anything from here. Okay. So, what is sine divided by cosine? Tangent. I'm still writing the integral symbol because all I'm doing right now is rewriting. I'm not even doing the calculus yet. I'm just rewriting it. Okay, what about the next thing to cite it? Can I put cosine? It's in the denominator, so it's almost like, it is, like 1 over cosine, which would be... Now, these two are in reverse order from the, the way I have it typed up there, but whose derivative is tangent secant? Secant. That's where most people freaked out today. And it really is not that big of a deal, okay? I am very quickly going to write some identities down here that I think you need, okay? I am first going to write the homework, though. And if we um, run out of time, you don't need to pack up. I mean, we still have like four minutes, by the way. But I want to go ahead and get this out of the way first. This is your homework. It's due Tuesday. I'm going to give you a few more problems from this section tomorrow, and that'll all be due Tuesday. And remember, we don't have school Monday. So it might not be a bad idea to try to get this done tonight. Okay. So here's some trig identities you need to know. Okay, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to back this over here. Okay, the first thing is you need to know, oh, man, I keep thinking... That's okay. We're going to go over this tomorrow. I forgot that 